Hello, I'm Mitchell, and I'm going to show you how to put together the Necromancer Dragon. We're going to start with the head, and it's always a good idea to dry fit the pieces before putting any glue on. That way you can make sure that it fits properly, and you can also see where the glue spots are, um, the contact points, so that you can get a good adherence to the two pieces. Make sure to follow along with our PDF assembly guide, that way you can get the part numbers that you might need. this model I've started with all of the limbs first that way I can glue them all to the body or leave them separate for painting that way everything's lined up properly because this is such a large model sometimes the pieces won't line up perfectly so it's a good idea to make sure you test fit everything before you glue it together. When gluing the arms on, I make sure to hold the wing there, that way you can get a proper fit. If you glue the arm on without the wing there, it might get in the way of the wing. So I'll always dry fit the wing there and just hold it in place, that way I get the angles and make sure the pieces are perfectly tight to the body. way the wing will also fit very very nicely because of any minor imperfections you might have with uh, the resin casting process sometimes you might have to trim some pieces just to make sure they fit together and this is why it's so important to dry fit things before gluing them that way you can make sure that things fit snugly Again, I'm going to hold the wing there, that way the arm is in place perfectly, and the wing is in place perfectly. Sometimes you'll see me wiggle the piece around. This is just to spread the glue and make sure that 
there's good contact. On this particular dragon that I built, there's a bit of a gap where the hair meets the body. So I just used a heat gun and bent the hair against the body. That way you have a nice smooth contact and I'm just pushing it while the resin is still soft so it lines up perfectly. You could also just fill this gap with green stuff or milliput or whatever you use to fill. When pushing this on, you'll kind of see me not push down on the tips and kind of pinch it and push it on the sides. That way you don't break any of those small fine hair tips. Now I had a similar problem with the ridge that goes across the head. So I just heated it up with a heat gun and made sure it was the right fit along the crest. There are also magnets on the back hair, so you can leave it separate if you'd like, but I glued mine. And again, don't push down on the tips, kind of hold it from the side like I'm doing, that way you don't break any of those tips off. Here's the majority of the body complete. We're going to do the pillar next. I just kind of cleaned up where the tail goes, that way it has a nice snug fit. If you look at this piece, there's a little notch on the top where the toe goes. And then the grooves go along the tail. So if you just watch how I put it together here, I always start with the foot and wrap the tail around. And then the tail tip, as you can see, I can't quite get it as tight as I want to. So with only two contact points, the tail and the leg, I'm going to heat up the leg with a heat gun. That way I can just, it can move to get the tail as tightly around the pillar as I can. And as you can see me test fitting it here, the tail fits slightly better, and the tip, that gap is totally closed. And now that we know it fits, we can put the glue on and put it together. on there just to make sure that the rest of the glue is lined up and then I'll glue the tail tip. This pillar won't fit in unless that tail tip is apart. You could also drill into the bottom of this pillar and use it as a painting handle or something. I would, I would most likely leave this off the base to paint it. very long position for the wing so just make sure that that is glued tightly all the way across the wing. If you saw I worked on one end, got it attached and then worked uh, all the way to the other end. heated up this wing just to get it to fit a lot more snug against this one. The curvatures were slightly different due to the resin casting process, but just a little heat and you're well on your way. You can also use a blow dryer for this. I have a heat gun, but you can totally use a blow dryer or hot water. Um, I recommend the blow dryer or heat gun, that way you don't burn yourself.
we've got our two wings. Again, I would leave these separate for painting. It's going to be a lot easier. All right, these rocks, they just glue to the base. They're kind of optional. There's base sculpted underneath them, so you can put them on, but they're designed to fit in specific places, so just make sure you test fit those. Put lots of pressure. So I'm putting both of these rocks on. Again, just paint the base separately. So this is kind of how I would leave it for sub-assemblies for painting. Just leave all these pieces separate. And there we go. I'm just pointing out the toe on this base that has to go into the stairs on the end there. And then the rest of the column just goes in the middle. If you look down the side, you can see the notches for the stairs. Sometimes you might have to wiggle it around to get it to notch in with the stairs. There's three little plugs on the wings that you can put magnets in and corresponding ones on the body. That way you can have the wings removable for transportation purposes. You could also add pins there instead. I did a combination of both on mine, off camera, but I used the center holes for a large plastic rod. You could use brass as well. And this is the completed dragon. I hope you enjoyed putting this together and thanks for watching.